Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed products. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Alrighty, so we start with M19 pack. We opened a pretty decent rare with Isareth. There's Hiromancer's Cages, Reasonable Removal. Angel of the Dawn was also one of the better cards in the Go White deck, which was typically red white with reinforcements as kind of the staple finisher for the deck. And then Pyromancer would be a fine card in that deck as well. And then we've got Rabbit Bites as good removal in green. Strangling Spores also playable. So a lot of good cards. I would be leaning more towards red and white just because those are quite powerful in most of the core sets. Although Isareth is tempting. I think I'm gonna go with maybe Angel over Cage. Now let's go with the rare. Still quite powerful. 3-3 three, three Death Touch with a recursive ability. Probably can take the Angel over it. Now kinda wish I'd taken Angel, because there's a Star Crown Stag, another staple of M19 draft, very powerful. We've got a Druid of the Cowl for ramp. No black card that really jumps out. Skeleton Archer is playable, but not a card I want to pick here. So, we had a standout cards are Stag, Druids, and then there's some other playables. The Rock's Oracle, there's a Snapping Drake. Thing between Stag and Druid here. Black Green. Tends to be a bit rampy, we've got a bit of maybe card draw and removal going. If we go black-white, we often have life gain synergies. Which, you know, these two cards don't really represent. I might be better off with Druid if we want to still play Isareth, since I think those will have better synergy as opposed to the Stag. Since again, black-white and a lot of these core sets ends up having life gain synergies, which, you know, don't always pan out. Well. Now I'm kind of regretting it, since there's a Herald of Faith. Problem is we've passed a few good white cards already now between Angel, Cage, Stag. There's no green card whatsoever here, and the only black card is, you know, a life gain synergy card. So I'll still take the Herald just because it's by far the best card here. I uh, could make a case for a bit of mana fixing in case we end up three colors, but if we can stick to two colors, it's probably for the best. So, yeah, we'll see. I mean, we could end up green-white for all we know. Even though we've passed a few good white cards already. Alright, what's next? The rare is pretty bad. We do have Cavalry, fine card in any white, go white type deck. Few playable black cards with the center endurance and dragons kind of pricey if we want to pay the kicker cost for it, but it's also a reasonable card. Probably go for cavalry here and uh, try and solidify the white a little bit. Yeah, if I went with my gut back one pick one and took the angel and then second pick stag, we would have been mono white so far but I was tempted by the rare. And then now I'll take Angel of the Dawn over 2nd Cavalry. Skyscanner is also a nice one in a lot of decks since it's quite flexible. Still seeing some good reds with Havoc Devils, Enigma Drake for a blue-red spells deck. No blank that I really want here. And Gift of Paradise does ramp. But the green hasn't seemed incredibly open, so despite passing two good white cards at the very beginning, white still seems to be flowing here with another cavalry and angel. So I'll take the angel. Alright, more good whites. We also see Lich's Caress, which while expensive is still quite good. And then there's a giant spider in green. Now Inspired Charge is typically a good finisher for the go wide deck. Problem is, we don't know if we're gonna end up with a lot of token makers in the next core set packs. And we already have Angel of the Dawn that does something similar. And same goes for Make a Stand. So I think I'm leaning Caress over Spider and over any of the white cards. 
Avon Wind Mage and Essence Scatter are also playable, but don't have a reason to take a blue card. And then Rustwing Falcon, Trusty Rusty. Fine card in these go wide decks where we can pump up the team. Uh, Stone Quarry would be a consideration if we were actual red white. Blood Divination, also not the worst. Good with token makers. As you can maybe sacrifice like a Doomed to the center to draw three. So if we didn't have this many white cards, I could be tempted to take a Blood Divination, but we're definitely more committed to white than we are black or green. And we wield, or no, this is 8th pick, Strangling Spores. Yeah, I'll take it. That's a good sign that black is open. Getting that late Lich's Caress and now Strangling Spores, so maybe black-white will still work out in the end. Just missed out on a Starcrown Stag. Take a Linebreaker as filler. Infernal Scarring's quite bad. Wow, I can't believe it. We wield a Starcrown Stag. So are we the only white drafters at the table? Must be. Well, feeling pretty good about this. Wield Ampicure, I don't think I'm playing it since we already have a bunch of fives that are better. So it could take like a Boneyard or Rupture Spire in case we need to splash some bomb. Uncommon for the vault. Yeah, more mana fixing just in case. Fourteenth pick inspired charge. I'll take it. So it could use more two drops, or curves quite high. But uh um, yeah, the card quality overall is pretty high too, so can't complain. Alright, not the rare we were hoping to open here, Graph Digger's Cage. So now we get the M20 pack. M20 was a pretty grindy set. Sanitarium Skeleton ended up being one of the overperformers, but Apostle of Pure Fine Lights is a pretty strong uncommon, especially against the Sanitarium Skeleton decks. See some good red cards with Spitfire and Flame Sweep, but don't see a reason to deviate from black white, at least white. Can maybe still be persuaded to move out of black, but uh, yeah, I don't think there's a strong case for anything other than Apostle here. All right, well, there's more token makers if I want to raise the alarm. Bone splinters, not amazing here, but can maybe wheel it. Best card overall in the pack. There's like a Cloudkin Seer. Howling Giant was quite good in M20, but it's possible that the core set draft is a little bit faster since M19 was a pretty aggressive set. So I don't know if a 7 drop is necessarily all that great. Dawning Angel is also fine, and then we could also take a Loyal Pegasus here. Could pivot into blue and take a Cloudkin Seer anyway and move out of black. I think I'm just going to take a Raise the Alarm since it synergizes quite nicely with Angel. It's good with Inspire Charge. We've got a bit of a Go White theme. And then Loyal Pegasus can be good, but also needs us to have some cheap creatures to enable it, so if we don't end up with more cheap flyers, that might not be the case. Alright, pack three. And we see an Ancestral Blade, which is totally fine. Essentially a 2 mana 2-2, two -two, and then also an equipment that gives plus 1 plus 1. And uh, Inspiring Captain, something else we can maybe hope to wheel. Aerial Assault, not at its best in an aggressive deck. But can be good in like blue-white flyers, where you're trying to race. And then looking at some of the other colors, there's nothing that really jumps out. Alright, I don't think we're gonna get many Battalion Foot Soldiers with only one pack. Uh, we're playing best of one, so Noxious Grasp is not a high priority. Another Cloudkin Seer and a Wave Crasher, so some pretty good blue cards here. But Audacious Thief is also totally fine. Um, especially if we can back it up with Bump Spells, so 
Also good with a Star Crown Stag, Inspire Charge, and Angel of the Dawn to make it a bit bigger. So I think Thief will be fine for us. But um, yeah, I wouldn't fault anyone for you know taking the Cloudkin and maybe pivoting into blue. Or black isn't amazing. Do you have a meandering river? You know what? Maybe I do speculate on the Cloudkin Seer here. Haven't seen a ton of amazing black cards so far. Marauder's Axe could be fine, although there's also Diamond Knight naming white. Could become quite large. Problem with our black also is that Isareth is double black. And if white is our primary color, casting an Isareth on curve is going to be kind of tricky. Whereas, you know, Strangling Spores and Caress, by the time we have five mana, we should have double black, so that's less of a problem. But I don't mind speculating on blue. And then here, there's some good red cards with Brawler, but we're not going to end up with a ton of elementals, so between Axe and Knights, I think I'll go with the Knights since we have a lot of white cards. Well, the only blue card here is Cerulean Drake, no white. Blood for Bones was a very good card, but it's not going to be amazing in our deck, which is trying to be more aggressive. But this is very good in a more grindy format. And then there's Blood Burglar as a fine to drop. So I think I'm taking Burglar over Blood for Bones. Just to have some more cheap stuff in case we do end up black white. It's essentially just a 2 2 lifelink on offense, which is still fine. Nothing here that I really want. Not gonna be main decking Disenchant or Aether Gusts. Don't need Apicure. So I'll just take an uncommon for the vaults. If we were playing sideboarded games, of course, the Aether Gust would be a very high pick. Alright, I can take a Warden, I suppose. There's also Boreal Elemental, another good blue card, but even if I cut my black, we already have two five drops in white. And Warden synergizes quite nicely with our two angels here at five, which we can play turn early. All right, I'm a big fan of the Metropolis sprites, as we see Inspire Charge from M20. So that one was in a couple of core sets. But yeah, sprite seems good. And then it looks like we've pivoted into blue, especially now that we wield the winged wards. All right, so out with a black, in with a blue. And now Aerial Assault also looks better. It's still close with Inspiring Captain. So looking at our curve here. Yeah, we could use a bit of removal, and now that we have all these flying creatures, Aerial Assault should be reasonable. And then Wave Crasher. It's probably the pick here. Can maybe pick up one of our ETB creatures like Cloudkin Seer. But we'll see whether or not we end up playing it. Alright, so blue-white flyers, even got a late Cerulean Drake. Probably not going to make the final cuts, but you never know. So now it's time for M21. Opens a black rare in Veto. And... Hmm. Some good cards, but not in our colors necessarily. Ghoul, Scourge for the plus one counter deck, Overload for blue-red spells. There's a Concordia Pegasus, and there's a Mistral Singer. I guess Battlements might even wheel and could be okay if we end up with more token makers. So between Pegasus and Singer... Hmm, this one's close. We don't have a whole lot of spells to enable Prowess, so maybe Pegasus is better. This is for the most part a 3 mana 2-2 two -two flyer, which you know is playable but not exciting. Doesn't look like a Riddle Form deck, even though Riddle Form can be quite strong. There's a Feat of Resistance as a nice comma trick. But I'm looking at this Gale Swooper, which is a flyer that can give another creature flying temporarily. 
So that seems fine. I uh, can hope to wheel Glidemaster, which is another good one here. That's a lot of shiny cards, but Sky Scanner looks good. It's just a small flying creature, great with a discount from Warden. Can pick it back up with Wave Crasher, draw an extra card. Yeah, we'll take a scanner here. So now, Valor Steed is another token maker. We've got uh, Battlements to pump up our team, which is pretty nice with all the small flyers we have, or I can take another Sky Scanner. I think I'll take Scanner and then hope to wield the other Battlements instead of the other way around. And uh, I think I prefer Scanner over Steed. But both are decent here. Alright, the picture is missing, but this is a Watcher of the Spheres, 2 mana 2-2, two, two. perfect for our deck. So that's an easy pick. And... Now I could take a Feed of Resistance, perhaps. See the Truth, not particularly exciting for Limited. There's also Dub, but... Don't really have to go all in on one creature, since we've got those Anthem effects instead. And Feet of Resistance is just a versatile combo trick. So that seems fine. And then another Gale Swooper over Pegasus. Yeah, especially now with Watcher and Evo's Isle, we can discount our flyers nicely. So we're not gonna lack playables. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with most of my cards. Ooh, Roaming Ghostlight, I remember this one. 3-2 Flyer that bounces something. Swift Response is also very good, especially in this type of deck. So, this is a stacked pack. Given that we only have the two fives, I think I take the Ghostlight here. So, Line Breaker's probably gonna get cut. We wield Singer. Don't know if I'll play it, but maybe. Glidemaster wields, although most of my creatures already fly, so it might not be necessary. So we're gonna have to make some tough cuts. And there's a crab. Could be a good ground blocker, but probably not gonna make the final cut here. Wield the steed. So... Well, even got a Lofty Denial. Seems good in this deck. And another Crab. Alrighty. Well, that was a pretty wild ride. Started out black, green, then white, and then blue-white in the end. But uh, pretty happy with the final result here, even though we still need to make a couple of cuts. So let us take a look here. So put our interaction in a separate pile. Alright, so... Some of the weaker cards that jump out, given that most of my creatures already fly, I could see cutting Glidemaster. I think Linebreaker could be cut, even though it does synergize with a Gale Swooper. And then Mistral Singer. Uh, Diamond Knights got a little bit worse now that we have all these artifacts in the deck. But it still looks pretty decent since we have a lot of white cards. We've got some card draw. Wave Crasher is also interesting. It's good with my ETB effects like Sky Scanner and Cloud Seer. Although there will be situations where we don't want to pick up one of our creatures and it can be a little awkward. Because it's not a May ability. So let's say I cut all three of these. We have 42 cards. I believe this is a 17 land deck. So still need to make two cuts. Raise the alarm might be a little bit out of place now that we moved away from the go white theme a little bit. And cavalry 
also kind of falls in that category, although cavalry is still kind of nice since it can help us block on the ground while the flyers chip in. It's good for double blocking too. And uh, it will eventually benefit from Angel of the Dawn. But a raise alarm feels a bit weak. Um, could also maybe cut the Inspire Charge, although it is still good with all the flyers, which are more likely to connect. So the race does have a bit of synergy with charge. Yeah, the four drops seem a bit too crowded. Yeah, I guess the cards I'm looking at cutting here are Cavalry, Wave Crasher, Inspire Charge, and Race the Alarm. Um, Inspire Charge is a great finisher. It's not great if we're behind, but we can still use it on defense potentially. I think Wave Crasher in, and then. I could just keep the Inspire Charge as a finisher, which does play well with our small flyers like Skyscanner, Falcon, Pegasus, and these other two drops. So this could be fine. Let's double check our sideboard here, see if we're missing anything. There's also Uncomfortable Chill, which is kind of like a reverse Inspire Charge. Doesn't seem quite as good. This is better if we're actually trying to block on the ground, as opposed to just using it as a bad fog effect. Yeah, kind of like the look of this. And then looking at our mana base, a bit more white and blue. Do need double blue for ghost light, but that's about it. So I can probably cut an island for a planes, go 971. By the way, if you haven't redeemed your uh, Strix Haven sleeves yet, there's five codes for all of them that everyone can redeem. Right, let's go with the Snowy Owl. Alrighty, on the play. And yeah, this seems keepable. Now when it comes to playing around combat tricks, there's a lot of them to think about, so I'm probably just gonna ignore most of them. Skyscanner lines up nicely against Scorpion at least. Although I kinda wanna pick it back up with uh, Wave Crasher too. Yeah, we can probably erase black-green here. And then next turn, probably go for Wave Crasher, pick up Scanner. Canopy Stalker. Must be blocked if able. Nah, that's a little annoying. So I guess... I mean, I can still go for it and just trade. Yeah, I think that's probably still the play. And then next turn we can... draw a bunch of cards with Scanner and Winged Wards if we want, or we can go Slides if they play something big. Right. Now I guess I'm looking at Winged Words plus Aerial Assaults. And then Winged Words first. Picked up Watcher and Falcon, so those are gonna be nice. And then now I might want to stay back. Sure. That's okay. That's a little annoying that they get to ETB again, I guess. Alright, so if I go Watcher... 
I could play two mana Sky Scanner plus Falcon. Ooh. Look at me comboing off. And there's the Inspired Charge, perfect. All right, that's fine. Take three. Can bounce Mr. Scorpion, keep up Feet of Resistance. And then next turn we can deploy our other flyers. Throw green. No, nope, they've got more removal. Alright, at least they don't gain life. So how much mana do I have? Seven. So I guess we just play all the creatures here. Rejuvenator can fly for a day. And then do we have lethal next turn? Phone's at 15. So we've got 6 plus... I guess I can move the blades. So I think we have Exaxes. Let me double check. So 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Alright, just like we drew it up. And we've got a nice curve. Could use like a sky scanner or Cloudkin Seer to make it even better, but I'm gonna keep. Now our hand's a lot less exciting. And we even drew the sky scanner. Still gonna go for stag here. Discards Fun Lurker. And then now we get to attack. And then Sky Scanner leaving up planes so that if we draw any land we can still play Pegasus. Alternatively, we could Wave Crasher picking up Falcon. Eh, I think I like this better. So hopefully, draw land next turn. So we can maybe double spell Knight plus Pegasus, and then if we name White and eventually pick up Falcon, we could also grow to a Knight again. Yeah, that seems fine. So let's attack. Could also go Wave Crasher, pick up Falcon, replay Falcon. 
but I think getting the extra evasive creature out there, especially with Inspire Charge in hand, is going to be better. And then next turn they might already be dead to Inspire Charge. The Flyers alone give us lethal. Alrighty, on the play, fine hand. Uh, sprite or blade on turn two is the question. I wouldn't be pumping the sprite anytime soon, so could see myself playing blade first. Yeah, still play the blade. And then turn 4 I can Sprite, keep up Denial. Opponent's probably got to raise the alarm here. Which I'm fine with if they want to double block. Ooh, hello Watcher. So I can go Watcher into Sprite. Although, I wouldn't be doing anything with the spare mana. Ooh, Cloud can see her. I can only get so excited. I guess I could attack, and if they block Sky Scanner, Feet of Resistance to get rid of it, and then still play Watcher, and then next turn I can play Sprite plus Cloud can see her. There's also an argument for not attacking with Sky Scanner, and I'm playing Watcher, keeping up Denial and Resistance. But I actively want to kill this Wind Mage, and they might take it anyway. Alright, opponent takes it anyway. And then now we get to keep up Denial and Resistance, and then next turn we'll unload some Flyers, I think. Which will also pump the Watcher. Could kind of be annoying long term with a lifelink. But if they spend their entire turn pumping it, that's maybe still fine. It's definitely a close call here. I think I let that resolve. Alright. I hope they stay back, since Watcher's easily gonna attack past it. But I guess they would be holding off Sky Scanner. More card draw, you love to see it. Jan is welcome, so they've got a life gain theme going on. Alright, one three flyer is actually a little bit annoying. I guess we can still play both here. Ooh, two mana sky scanner. Could still move the ancestral blade as well. So if I play sky scanner, I pump watcher. Could move the blade to Cloud can sear and smash with the flyers. 
sure. Alternatively, I can just play Gale Swooper, fly the token, and then I have these that all get to attack and a sprite as well. Yeah, I guess that's more mana efficient here. So everyone but Cloudkin here attacks, I think. Let's say we do attack with Cloudkin, then they're taking 7, 8, down to 2. Probably not quite worth it given the life gain they have. And then next turn we get to maybe double spell again or pump the Metropolis sprites, move the blade, got some options. Alright, they've got their own payoff cards here. Empyrean Eagle is a good one. So the game's not over yet. I could double block here. Seems a little risky if they have a pump spell. Nope, I guess they don't. Looks like we're playing Constructed here. Warden into a 1 mana Sky Scanner. Yeah, sign me up. They have a counterspell. Could also play Herald of Faith. If I play a scanner, I still get to pump sprites. And move the blade, maybe. Or we can have our cake and eat it too. So let's say we attacked with everyone here. So they gain one. Um, this is my only ground creature. So let's say they block here. Take the damage from Watcher. Block this here. Block this here, then they're still dead. But they could have interaction, so let's say they deal with the Watcher somehow. Then they still have three blockers, six life. Block, block, block. They wouldn't be dead, but they're still in kind of rough shape here. Yeah. Let's smash. Fair enough. Now we force them to jump with a Corister. So I think sending the 2 2 on the ground was still worth it. Opponents at 4. I think I moved to the sprite so I can pump it an additional time. Three blockers, block, block, block. Still dead. Alright, can pass priority, or I can pump. Guess I'll pump. Fine hand. Turn one mountain. Blue-red spells, okay. Well, this Apostle not gonna be at its best in this matchup for a number of reasons. 
But I, I guess it could potentially mess with some graveyard synergies. Uh oh. Gutter snipe is terrifying. Don't know if I should be racing, but if they tamp the gutter snipe, I can at least kill it with aerial assault next turn. So I kind of want them to attack. I remember gutter snipe from the magic duels days where it could one hit KO you. I guess it's more than one hit, but one turn KO you <laughs> with all those cheap flashback cards and spells you could cast. Gutter snipe down, and next turn maybe drop Harold. All right, Harold, I guess. Time for Angel. Let's see, we've got five mana, so I wouldn't be able to double spell here. And then next turn we can go digging with Winged Wards. If we find an island, we can Sprite. If not, maybe just send the Angels. Could be a good spot for our plus two plus one inspire charge. That's aggressive. Uh -huh. oh, almost perfect here, just missing a blue mana. So do we trade here? I guess if we swoop, they're probably not going to attack with a dragon. But then next turn I'll bounce elemental, swing with the team. And that's probably okay. Or I could trade Herald now and then next turn bounce dragon. Because I'm going to have to trade for elemental at some point. Sure. And Gale Swooper is just so eager to give creatures flying, it doesn't matter whose team they're on. And we'll send Sky Scanner too now. Looking good here. Sweet. On the draw. Yeah, it's a bit of a slow hand, but assuming I can find a third land for scanner, we get to winged wards, dig deeper. For opponents, a very aggressive deck, we kind of get punished since. We don't have the best uh, defense here early on. But I don't think I can mulligan. Ooh. Oracle. Oracle. 
So maybe a red black sacrifice deck with Act of Treason effects. I mean, Act of Treason's been in pretty much every course that I can remember, so they might have picked up a few. Next turn we could double spell. That's fine. So I have two Pegasus first and then Winged Words. Then it feels like the first five drop I play is probably going to get killed, so... Alright. Ghost Light's going to be better than Herald, I think. Opponent being very aggressive. So if we can stem the bleeding and stabilize and slowly take over with our card advantage, we could be okay. Could also go Blade plus Scanner. Also, kind of like bouncing the zombie here. That's dead. Do we feel comfortable playing Herald or do we wait? Now with Diamond Knights, we could go Knight, Blade, Equip Knight. Yeah, that seems pretty good. And then now we still have our angels left over and hopefully the points out of removal. They've used their fair share here. I'll block. If they have a pump spell, that's fine by me. Wasn't sure if double blocking would have been worth it. Would have been worth it against Infuriate, but if they had the black one, not so much. Alright, so I've got seven mana. If I go a scanner, pass with Inspired Charge up, I could double trade. But our opponent's gonna see through that since we didn't equip the blade, which is kind of giving it away. And then this can trade for Oracle at least. Alright, let's see what happens. I guess I'm regretting not moving the equipment now, since Devils get to take out Angel. But we can block Oracle, so there's that. Alright, could have been worse. And they've got Oracle plus Skeleton combo, so we need to close out the game before they get too much value from this. And the zombie can also drain us. 
But we do have an Inspire Charge, which can hopefully close out the game quickly. Super. All right, I mean, this seems pretty straightforward. And then next turn, cross our fingers and inspire charge. Probably gonna have to block here and lose a creature in the process. Uh oh. I guess we just lost. That's unfortunate. A lucky top deck Chandra's Outrage for the win. Well, that's too bad, but we get to try again. Fine hand. Ah, point on Tom Monorets. At least so far. Pegasus, decent blocker early. Right, red white aggro. Raise the alarm end of turn, presumably. Nope. So I guess I have a comma trick, maybe a sure strike. I think I'm still blocking if they search or if they attack here. Yeah, so this is going to be a sure strike type effect, but the next round I get to play Warden and hopefully block. That infuriates, so they trample for one. And a manifold key, interesting. And get to play Ghost Light if Warden survives, if not, Stag is still fine. Alright, we're on the clock now. Gonna take at least two per turn. Yeah, we'll see what they do, but I imagine we'll be forced to trade. If I go slight bounce, they can just replay it next turn, so we're not making a ton of progress. And then hope to find some card draw, sky scanners, cloudkin seers into more action. Winged words. Emulator can take out ghost lights. So I guess I can attack with Ghost Light, and then if they want to sack Emulator, I can charge. And Apostle's kind of disguising my Inspired Charge, thanks to the activated ability. And 
and I'm fine trading Apostle for Immolator. Problem is if they draw an instant to enable prowess, we could be in trouble. Hmm. So that becomes unblockable and then I guess they'll send Spitter too. So I probably trade for Spitter then. Don't think exiling anything mattered and we might want to charge. Okay, so that doesn't matter. Alright, that was a great draw. Probably one of our bests. Just could hope they don't enable prowess next turn, since I won't have Inspire Charge backup. But if they sack him later, I guess they don't have any pressure. I get to deal seven and gain two. So it's going to be close. Next turn is going to shrink down back to a four, four feet of resistance. Not bad. So if I were to inspire a charge, we would have 7 plus 4 is 11. Plus 1 from feet is not quite lethal. But I'm kind of interested in charging now, since there's a small chance they would sank Immolator, and I kind of want to use up my mana here. Alright. That's just perfect. And I imagine that's going to be game... Alright, dead blade to equip knight. So had they not sacrificed, there's a chance they could have killed me since blade would have enabled prowess. So they could have hit me for eight exactly. Let's see here. Does feet only target our own creatures? It does. Otherwise we could have given the immolator protection from reds so the furor falls off but that would have been a, an interesting play as well. Sadly, doesn't work that way. So yeah, definitely close game. All right, let's crack some packs. I guess I don't have the entirety of M19 yet. I think I'm still missing a couple mythics and rares even, so. It's kind of nice that they're giving us M19 packs to open. Hungering Hydra. I guess we can do a pack one, pick one here. So M19 drafts, pack one, pick one. I think Corrosion, I remember the mill deck sometimes coming together. Of course, it was at its best if you got a five mana rare, but even a double Corrosion deck could sometimes get there. Apex of power, not especially great and limited. Enigma Drake can be quite effective, although Pegasus Corsair would probably be my pick here, just because the white decks were so powerful in M19, and Corsair's a great enabler. Runic Armasaur, pretty solid. Overall not the strongest pack for limited. So I wouldn't mind taking the rare here, even though you're not going to get to draw too many cards off of it. Nothing really jumps out. <laughs> Alpine Moon. Sadly, M19 did have a lot of janky rares that were mostly meant for constructed sideboards. Alpine Moon being one of them. Folly Veteran could be quite strong. Uh, there was a small artifact sub-theme. So Pioneer could be a nice role player there. 
and then Majesty can also be a nice engine card for the green decks. So there's a couple options. Sun Cleanser, another sideboard card, meant to stop the energy decks as standard, but arrived a little bit late to the party after they already had to ban a bunch of stuff. Here, um, not the most exciting pack once again, Bristling Boar's fine. Bunch of good green cards, but nothing really super exciting. Alrighty, even have a vault to open. Don't see that every day. But for now, want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.